Hello and welcome back. So we're ready to create tasks now in our application front end and have that go to our MongoDB database. So in our previous video, we were looking at just listing the tasks that we had in the back end, which we had inserted through um, Postman. So now let's go ahead and look at how we're going to create our own doing form. yet is creating tasks. So let's go back. And so here's our thing. And we have this add function this button to say add. And it, the idea is if you click on it, it should take us to our add page. Now there are a number of other things we're gonna stick in here, like the current logged in user and so on, when we have that information. But for now, and ideally when we click add here, we just don't want it to go away. What we really want is actually, we're gonna move this delete from here. And when you wanna delete, you have to go to the edit the task. And then from there you can do delete. So you don't want it from, from here. So we'll, we'll fix that in a minute. But let this add. Let's work on add. So application route, if we go back to our application route, and we stick in a new route. So um, you know, this one I can really take this out because we don't need it. Actually, I can change it. Um, so that's our listing route. Um, here we can call this task slash create, I think is what we said we're gonna do. And this is task. And then template, and this is task dash create. Let's do use a template called edit, uh, edit file, and then this is going to be task dash create controller, and again we're just going to go with just controller. And in my template um, for task, I have create. I don't have a template yet for create for edit, but I have the controller for create, and I've already been in. In, I've already included it here. So what I need to do is, where is my thing? So here, and again, I'm gonna cheat a little bit and just go to the to-do HTML one and I'm gonna copy all of it and then I'm gonna close it because I don't think I'm gonna need it right now. And then here in my task template, I'm gonna say new file. I'm gonna say task-edit is what I call it, HTML. And I'm going to paste that. And since this is my edit file, I will have a listing. So I take that out because remember, I split this out. Um, for the example that they do the to-do, they have the list, the task listing, the to-dos listed, and the create input box. So um, I'm going to take that out. I'm going to take out this also. And um, so let's look at what we have now. So a lot of stuff in here about to do and task for and to do form. So I'm going to call this again. Um, let me just do it by end because it took me forever just not to do it the other way. Task and uh, task. Okay. Now we have low case to do's and we'll fix them as we go through. So the to do panel, task panel. Okay. And there's nothing actually using the class name, but We'll just try and do this this way. And so task form, I'm basically saying when this form is submitted, what I want you to do is call the controller, right? Create task form method and pass it the, the task that is in the, um, pass it the task that is available on that controller. And so this is going to allow us now to um, submit. Now, the reason why this works is because your submit button, this button at the bottom, is defined as a submit button. So since it's a submit button, it's going to try and submit the form. And therefore, you can put this ng submit that says, if there's a submission on this form, this is what I want it to be called. Now, you could simplify things and just simply take this out of here, this function, put it here, and then call it ng click to say when this button is clicked but we'll leave it as a submit button. Um, actually, I don't want the old form to be submitted that way. If it fails, I want to be able to show an error message um, and then navigate to a different page. So, uh, all right, let's leave it for now. Later on, I'll change it if I need to later. And so this is create task. We're going to say create task, title, and then um, We'll leave these for now, and what we'll do is at the bottom here, and um, we'll task button. 
we'll do this class you see ng um, button class button um block button da 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 all this other stuff so success button block button i don't need a block button i just need a large button so i'm going to copy this and i'm go here and for reference this i'm going to do class control c so copy this take it here paste it here and i just need button large and button success um, which is the add button and then this should turn to like a green button or something pretty soon a big green button oh there you go all right all right so let's go back to our edit template all right so that's fine um i don't need it to be a block button a block is going to take over the whole line at the bottom and this is the task form basically if the task form is valid or my CTRL has a to do that is to do a task object that is valid then I want to show this add button so notice that what's going to happen how are we going to know the value is valid is because we have a task tied to this form as we fill it in it's going to call this is valid method and of course we're only going to be allowed to let's say save it or create right a new task if it's valid all right um, so this is text box Form control input placeover and then we're going to call this subject and model is going to be ctrl task and then the subject right so it's going in that task and then message is um name that message so i think we just have mesg you know and then uh maximum length and Gmax, so this is going to help enforce our thing and require order focus means when you come to this form, this control is the one that get the automatic focus. And then here, um, this is the what this message referred to, so the task message, MESG or MSG. And we can do TASK task message to match with that. So form. That. So whatever error message the form is showing, which is this task form, we're going to show it here. And so it's going to tell us one of these. All right. So when it's, you know, required, when the, this thing says it's required message, we're going to show that if it says a minimum length, we show that, blah, blah, blah. Okay. So this is looking pretty much um, almost like it's ready. It's not quite ready. Let me reformat this a little bit. And it made it a bit long. And that's going to happen every time I do a reformat on this key, keyboard in this editor but we know that there are a couple more fields that we need and so for example we need text text area so we need a text area field so text area and with a text area field class control uh, input yeah i'm going to take this off take this off from here i'm not sure what that's doing and the subject, I don't need a subject, a placeholder, placeholder for my body. And I don't need, um, so I could put this if I want, name, um, body. Um, no, I don't need that. So the name on a controller is, on a, um, on a field is just, um, you know, uh, so let's say, let's call this field subject. And there's the name of it. And of course, we have to do subject here. Can we refer to the form? And this field has got subject and what the errors on that field. And so body is name, maximum length. With a text area, you don't have maximum length. Instead, what you have is columns, number of columns, COLs, equals to, let's say, 50 or 100, I don't know, 100 might be fine, and rows. And we'll say number of rows is four. All right, so that's our text area. Um, all right, uh, the next thing we have, the field we have is a checkbox. And that is, you know, this doesn't make sense as a checkbox. We don't need a placeholder of a checkbox. We have ng model tied to that. And then we have ng uh, model 
and then done so we have the done field title checkbox and then we have the name of it is done and max length and autofocus all that stuff does not make sense so we take that off so we have essentially three fields um, so here we should put this a little closer to this field just below it all right let's see now if we have um, no I need um, something else so one of the things I'm gonna do well I'll come back to that but essentially what I want to do is I want to say um, you know label um, for equals subject and I want to say the label for the subject is the subject field and um, close label and that's gonna kind of put it next to this and then I'm gonna do copy I'm going to paste this, and, and this is not quite right. I'm going to show you why it's not quite right in a second. And so this is going to be our body, and like I said, this is going to be a long video. So I'm going to end it just now and sort of leave the rest of you to do, because at least so far, what I've shown is that we have completely tied our front end to our back end. And all I'm doing now is tightening up, um, actually, um, our... Um, actually just tightening up our uh, so input I mean you don't really need to do it. so label label for done so that should be closed all right um, if I sort of reformat this and this sort of go with this let's go with this sort of and then this go with this and then I refresh here and look at my form uh, oh, I need to go to the create form. And so here we go. And now you could see what it looked like. So subject above, above, and then the placeholder, and I could start typing. And notice that it says that oh, this field is required, body. And then as soon as I start typing, it minimum, and then once I get enough, that thing. So that tells you that oh, at least this is working. Okay? And notice um, if I don't have enough, let me open this form. So long as my form is not valid, create button is disabled. And then once it becomes valid, this create button is enabled. Because we said that the only thing that's required for a valid form, for a valid task, is this field being um, present, present. And we did that in our model here when we say a, a valid task is one that where the subject is defined, the subject is a string, and the subject is minimum length is greater than or equals to five. So that seemed to work. Um, the other thing here is our body field. And this body is supposed to be in the next line. And that's what I was talking about. And done, and look where it's not you know, quite tight to this already. And so what are we going to want to do is be able to group these two, these things together as one field, group these together as one field, group this together as one field. And so the easiest way to do that is to go here and go to get bootstrap.com because we're using the bootstrap library and we're going to look at uh, let's look at css components and so here are forms and if we scroll along these are the different type of forms so this look like more like the form we want where the text is at the top and then the thing the input is below so if you look at how you do this form is you have a div that says form group and then you have class form group then you have a label, which is exactly what we have. Then you have the input and type, and then the class form control, and then the ID field that matches with the form. All right, so let's do exactly that. So it looks like what we need to have is this, and this looks close enough to what we have already. Um, you know, we should use ID field, name and ID field. It's just what it gets when it's submitted, so that, that's okay if we change this to ID. Um, because our form is getting the submission, we don't use the actual form submitted data. Instead, we extract those values because we have them bounded in G um, model. So I do a div, and then actually, instead of me typing this stuff, I'll just copy this, copy that, and I'll paste it here, and I'll paste it here, and I'll paste it here, and then I'll close this div. And I'll close this div, and then 
I close this out of there here. Okay. And the only thing that I'm missing then uh, is that on my input fields, I should have con forward control, which I already have. On my input field, I have form control, input field, form control, form control. So this looks good. And let me reformat this. And diff form class form group. And then inside form group, I have, um, oh, I have two form groups now. Uh, only one form group I actually need, and uh, but let's see, let's go back and revisit. So form group, form group. Oh, okay, so we need a form group for each one of these things, and that's what I think I have now. Okay, so let's do format again, and so here, form group, form group, form group. So I put a little space between them so you can easier to, to read and I have a form group and this break I don't really need this hard break because I have a horizontal rule just below there after this div and the div is going to act as a night break anyway so let's go back and see what my form looks like now and so um, why is this still in the next line this is supposed to be in its own form group so um, let me make sure. So I have to do container and uh, task container doesn't matter. Um, we'll fix that up. Um, that's easy to do with looking at the to do style here. Uh, Event.css is to do ho hover and all this other stuff. Um, and to do done panel, to do photo control and all this stuff. We can copy all these things and just change the name. But um, Anyway, I'm going to ignore the style, so now I'm just trying to figure out why my edit form is not showing in its own form group. So this is a div. It should be, it should break it and put it in another group because they're not part of the same. Huh. So why isn't this, let me put a line here and say horizontal rule. Why is this not um, pushing it in the nuts? So refresh, okay. So now it's there. And this is supposed to give me that required message, but it's not. So, oh, because I probably don't have the name field on it. Um, let's see, ID, um, let's see, name, yeah. Equals subject. And yeah, that's the only field I need with with names so that um, this part work, right? Because for the form, it needs a name, not the subject. But for for label, it wants the ID. So anyway, um, let me refresh again. Okay, so there we go. It works now. So my validation messages are back, and it's in the next line. I think I just had to save um, and refresh. So now this is back to working again. I still do not like all my checkbox areas looking. So I'm gonna go back here and take a peek at how they have their checkbox. And so the checkbox is the label. Inside the label is the input control and everything. So inside the label is the input control. So uh, let me go take another look. So class checkbox and then label. So here is not form control, but rather it's checkbox. All right, and then inside the label, they don't have anything here. And then they just put this, this, which means to put this, cut this and put it before the done. see if you can get this to format properly and this is not formatted properly and let's see uh, input type checkbox and so it didn't like that it has this okay okay so
I don't know why is the input type checkbox class form control I would take out form control and just the model and I don't need ID or anything because I'm not referencing this on the form I'm done input and then this goes with that this goes with that so it should be fine okay let's go back here let's refresh okay there we go much better all right all right looks good now so if one last thing I want to do is to verify that all my checkbox here is working fine. So imagine that in my controller, my create controller, so this one is working fine. My create controller, I want my task to be created with true. Now I could have done that in the model and just said this, that when you create a task, it gets the value true or false. So this is a, an actual string. So I can do true instead. And so now every time a new uh, thing is created, new task is created, it's created as true. And there we go, it's checked already. Um, and I can show you that though, if I change this to false, and I save, and I go back, I just refresh in the background, notice always unchecked. The other way you can verify it um, is to go to your edit control, I know say that so I'm gonna put a test outside here and then I'm gonna do something like data or something like that. Is that that, that? CTRL that to do and pipe it to JSON. Okay? And then I will save this and then I go back here and I look and I refresh. I refresh the page and there's data up there. And as I check this, I wanna see if it's gonna check up there, if it show anything up there. And I'm not seeing anything. So that's kind of troubling that I, oh, ta to, ta I call it to do instead of task. Ah. Yep, see. Refresh. Okay, so there it is. That's more like I expected, All right? And then now when I do check this, as you can see, that's toggle into and true for false in my model. And as I type in these field, as you can see, it starts filling in up there. And as I type in my body, it's also filling in. So that gives me very good confidence that my stuff is real, binding correctly. And so now I'm going to end this video here because I'm pretty sure this is going on to like 50 minutes. Okay. So what we have now is we have two things. Oh, we, we haven't called the back end to save this. So we should do that before we end. Um, let's do on submit. Um, so we have this already create task. So copy this, let's go to our create controller and we're going to say um, self that create task is equals to a function that take a task and of course what does it do when it gets its task? Well, it calls our DAO, right? Task DAO to say I want you to insert, remember we decided to use the word insert, insert this task and then then you're going to do something or uncatch an error. So let's go back and verify that that's what we have. Or in DAO, we have, oh, on our DAO, we call create. Okay, so the old insert thing was on the resource. So we have, and then we take a um, object here, and this verify that oh, it's an instance of task, but we know that's all good because in the first place, we create a new task and assign it to self the task. And that's what is passed back in here. So it is going to be an instance of task. And so function, if we have a task, because once we create a task, we expect a task back. And this task is going to be populated now with the underscore ID and all this stuff. So what we want to do is say, um, um, so we can do a couple of things. Um, once you create a task and it's successful, we should really navigate to the listing to show the new task. If on the other hand, we get an error, right? What we want to do is um, display the error message, right? So we want to do like self that MESG is equals to whatever the error is. Now we don't actually have a box for error because we, le we left it, uh, where did we leave our error message? Uh, da, 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 da. Um, we didn't put one down anywhere. Um, so we'll go back to, since we're using Bootstrap, 
we'll go and look for a nice uh, something that shows you like alerts and stuff so they have some so let's look for something that shows you like warnings and so on and so uh, let's see getting started components okay no I'm not looking for that so CSS um, where is that less responsive type of class images buttons tables no okay let's see so this video is going to be long yeah sorry all right so I want to show you how we get these things so that you can find what you want and make the application look the way you want and so alerts the thing I'm looking for is like alert and info box and you know what I can just search for it I can do find alert and oh it's not here uh, where is that getting started no, it's not going to be over in the Get and Start section. Um, I can assure you that it has things like alerts and stuff. Um, some nicely team one already. Um, so it doesn't seem to be over there. So JavaScript, why is it not in... Oh, alerts. Okay. So example and usage and so on. So you can have alerts for when stuff something is good um, alert box hmm. uh, okay so button that um, I want to do one like that I want one to pop up like this, but um, they used to have div that's al an alert. Um, let me try this because I'm almost certain that it just um, when you put alert. Okay, let me try this. Um, I'm pretty sure it just used to be. I'm not finding it. Uh, edit. I'm pretty sure it just used to be if I do. Um, div um, class equals alert and alert that danger I believe used to be one Oops, alert dash warn is probably what we want not something as strong as danger and then I'm going to close the div and then in here I'm going to put uh, blah 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 uh, ctrl ctrl that mesg um, pretty sure this is going to work if it doesn't work I'll sort it out by the time the next video. All right, um, so refresh. Um, now, we're not gonna see it, of course, because we don't have any alert. Um, so this is a horizontal rule. We can revisit how big this space is, spaces, and it will, whether we actually want all that space there. So um, we write in, if you're using the right title container and all this other stuff, you know, just a big space there, okay. What we want, though, is once you create something successfully, it should navigate back to um, slash task, right? So you can see the list of tasks here at the one that you created. So what we're going to do is um, insert. Um, we have to do it in our controller where after you're successful, you can navigate to um, the thing. So. If we go to, uh, what are you using? You're using ng dot sign resource. So Angular JS, and you go to there, and you go to API, and you scroll down to the service you're using, which is ng um, route. This guy, you click here, and it tell you how to install it and so on, and if you route parameters, oh, you get a route, but and it says it's always look at location that um, URL. But the thing that we want is actually how to change our route. And there are a couple of ways you can do it, but the one way um, I use is just insert dollar sign location and then say location that path and then pass a value to location that path, that's a location that path. So let's try that 
and see how it works. So I'm gonna go here and say I want to install dollar sign location, right? And then I'm going to say I want location dollar sign location. And then if we're successful, I want to do dollar sign location that path, and the path I want to change to uh, use single quote code is slash. It's just slash because slash represents um, the listing. So I'm going to go back to my application and I'm going to say add and that takes me over here and say this is this is from our create task form and some additional info here and this task is done and so I could create and I have an error. So owner path. So that is the message that came back from the back end. And notice I stuck it up at the top here. Um, of course, I could filter out and make sure it's how I don't stick all of this here. Um, I could look at it and see which field was missing and so on. So it's telling me that our owner ID is missing. So what I'm going to do for now, in order to make sure that we can still be able to create things, is I'm going to put owner ID as dummy owner. Okay, and that's probably not nice. So Sam, the owner, so I just put Sam. And then I'm gonna go back here and refresh. And then I'm gonna say, this is our task from the, you know, front end or something like that. And more data here. And then this is done. And I'm gonna click create. And now it's successfully created and it navigates to the listing. And there is the task. And of course I can delete all my tasks. And if it's deleted, it says nothing to do. I don't like that error message and number of tasks are showing up all the time. So I'm going to go to listing. And I'm going to say that oh, um, number of tasks, I don't want that there. Maybe I might put it back somewhere else. But for now, I don't want it. And this error message, I don't want to show up. So I'm going to do ng if. And I'm going to say equal if. I only want to show an error message if there's actually an error. So ctrl.mesg. Only if there's an error, then it should show it. And so I go back here, and there's nothing that says um, about error, right? And then I click Add, and yet another task from the front end. You know, more stuff here. And I'm not showing in my thing whether it's done or not, but we can do something like, you know, the tasks that are done, we I like them differently or whatever. Okay, so just a reminder, these videos were cut from a much longer video. So when you see it end abruptly, that's because I cut it. So that was all we needed to do to have our create form working. And the next thing is your to do to make an edit form. So eventually I'm gonna provide the solution, but at least want you to try it. So in the next video, I'm gonna give you a lot of pointers um, on, and you know, good head start on what you need to do to get edit working. And then I'd like you to try and implement it. All right. See you in the next video.